Since the beginning, the Scottish people have voiced their opposition. But at this time, when we've got these developments, we've also got less power than we ever had before. So what can we do about it? What we can do is we speak directly. We speak for ourselves. We speak to you directly because our government does not speak for us. In CND, we encompass a lot of different kinds of people, and people use different methods to achieve what we want. So we, and there's space for everybody to do the thing that they're comfortable with. So while we have people who undertake direct action, we also have a lot of people whose activity for peace is different. They maybe speak to politicians, or some of them it's just down to voting. Some of them come in and help in the office. Some of them make things that we can sell. Obviously, there's a space for everything, and in CND, there's space for direct action as well. Here, that that tends to be things like blockading at Faz Lane, or trying to physically stop the trucks and the nuclear convoys. And people who undertake direct action tend to also be part of other organisations, like Trident Plowshares or Nuke Watch. Her Majesty's naval base Clyde, commonly known as Fastlane, used to house Britain's nuclear submarines since the Cold War. It is situated on the Lower Clyde, 30 miles from the centre of Glasgow. The weapons, basically, they dig into like, the hillside, and they're in there, there's like 100, 200, nuclear warheads in it and like basically like, if it ever happens and they threw a lot of nuclear weapon they'll throw it straight on Kilport and like basically that's Western Scotland gone, Glasgow uh, gone. Where that bit of um, trees are up there is where Kilport is but it's on the other side because like um, if you go too close to it the MAD turn up and say like, oh, what are you doing? Uh, just showing my friend. Uh, no, no, you can't be here. This is MAD land. At the moment, there is actually a Vanguard in uh, Vanguard submarine, the one that fires us the missiles, but it's like restocking, ready to go back out again. Because uh, every time they come in to, into Fastlane, in the Vanguards, they have to drop their weapons. It takes them four days to unload and load and then they can come round because you know, they're not allowed to bring their weapons into Vaseline. Just beyond there, that's where the water, the land groups down so they get the submarines in and out. Thirty-five years later, the peace camp is still there next to the base. It is the longest protest site in the world. We're fighting against not a lot of interests, there's financial interests. Nuclear weapons, they, they make money for some companies and for some people. So you're left with a situation where countries are committing to spend this money to support certain industries. It's a very poor argument, you know, that then distills into an argument perhaps for jobs. So we have to keep trident because it, that um, because jobs depend on it. It's a morally bankrupt, ar bankrupt argument. The moral argument against burning and blasting and radiating people to death and ruining our planet forever. The land occupied by the camp has been under the jurisdiction of various local authorities over the years. Today it is controlled by the local council of Argyll and Butte. It's just before the uh, Scottish referendum uh, mm -hmm. came up. Um, it was uh, some people that I'd met, you know, they were coming up and I thought, well, you know, 
Uh, I've always liked camping and being outdoors. Yeah, I've not really done that many actions as, as, as much as other people. Um, I've not really done a lot. I've generally been the one who site sits while they're all doing stuff. You know, I'll, I'll take care of, you know, cleaning up site and kind of any visitors come in, you'll know, deal with them more. Mm -hmm. Some people can be, you know, they're, they're, they're able to be arrested, you know, for like that. Um, um, but yeah, you know, you'll get certain people coming through who are, you know, not able to be, you know, arrested. Like, well, Kirsten, for example, she's working, do you know what I mean? So she can't... I get arrested Yeah, she'll, she'll lose her job, you know, and she, so she can't, she can't be doing it. But there's other people who, you know, do other certain things. They, they call it breach of the peace, but it's actually, you know, which is a bit bizarre because what we're actually doing is preventing people from getting to their work or preventing the transportation of, you know, a very deadly weapon. There always has to be two people on an evictable site. If there isn't, uh, basically, they can evict. It's a, a big job outside Fast Lane, North Cape. Because this is when the shift changes, a new shift comes in and the old shift goes, and it's just a battle of being there to remind people that so many people in Scotland, the majority of people in Scotland, think this is abnormal. This should not be going on, not be posting nuclear weapons, which can destroy so many millions of people. first became a thing, there was a very strong movement against them, and then during the Cold War there was a strong movement against them as well. Um, I think we were really uh, coming close in the sort of campaign for the independence referendum in Scotland <coughs> to at least moving the weapons down south. Um, however, I think post-independence, post-Brexit, um, in the sort of state that the UK is in at the moment, and particularly with the resurgence of people talking about nuclear weapons in the war, um, in relation to Donald Trump, in it's a, it's a very special uh, time because in, in the UN in New York they're, they're actually negotiating a nuclear weapon ban treaty and there's about 130 countries sitting down very positively to make a treaty that will ban nuclear weapons like the treaties against the uh, chemical weapons and also landmines and uh, probably by July there will be a treaty in place ready for signing a ratification. I'm sitting, meeting, drawing up a treaty to ban them and the UK is not taking part or America or Russia but the other countries from all around the world have said we're sick to them. You haven't got rid of them like you promised and we're going to hey, drop them. There is an urgent need to have a specific response towards international affairs. I agree with Jeremy Corbyn that the right way to de-escalate situations is not to respond in kind. If you respond in kind, you escalate. So in answer to your question, do I think this is having any effect? It's, de it's got to be having. It's got to be having some effect. Like surely, just energetically, to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep having your voice, even if people aren't really listening. The fact that you're here and you have a presence and you keep something going for you know for decades like this. In the in the end, they're, they're having some effect. Maybe not quite as dramatic as they'd hope, and it might not. You know, just talking to one of the ladies who's been here, you know, doing stuff like this, best part of 30 years, and um, and actually, these guys are all playing their part, however small it might be, in you know, much wider battle, which is kind of you know, they're fighting for humanity. About 16 years old though. Uh, they built it to last for six months and it's been here for 16 years so.
And uh, this post here, and the beam going across, is the only surviving thing. When Hootsie put it up, I don't know if you met Hootsie. Yeah, but, but when, he, when he put it up, everyone's going, that will never work, that will never work, and it's been here for 16 fucking years. The German camps have been taking place at Kulport since 1998. The August German camp at Kulport on the west coast of Scotland is an open event for everyone opposing Trident. And as somebody who lives in Bristol and travels up and down the M4 to London pretty regularly, I was shocked to discover but Burfield, which is the final assembly plant for the nuclear warheads, is one mile south of the M4 near the city of Reading. based on a fleet of four submarines. These are technically on the limit of what Britain is able to manufacture and maintain. One of those submarines is on patrol under the ocean at any one time. Uh, the idea of submarines is that they are almost undetectable and they can cruise uh, under the oceans for up to a year um, and their missiles can travel several thousand miles and hence target anywhere in the world. There are eight uh, missiles on each submarine. Um, a quick point is that they are American missiles with American guidance systems, but the British politicians talk about the independent British nuclear deterrent. So they're lying. Uh, the Americans control that bit. But the warheads are made in this country, and that's what's put together at Burfield. So what we're doing at the moment is uh, we're baking it on the fire, you know, to melt all the inside and hopefully uh, jam the tools up a bit more and make it a bit more difficult for to build different layers so that the lock-on action lasts as long as possible. Where is the newspaper? And there are uh, Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos Almudena y él han estado esta noche en prisión. Yeah, yesterday I was part of an action. Um, we blockaded uh, a road um, leading up to uh, a nuclear weapons base, and yeah, we um, I think kept the road out of action for um, a good number, like two or three hours, um, and then um, we've been then taken in uh, and spent uh, the night in jail, uh, and then we spent all day. Uh, waiting to, to hear our charges uh, and um, yeah three of us uh, came out on bail and, and two have been remanded uh, until uh, their trial. As a direct result of the work we had done leading up to the referendum and the election we had a body of MPs who were on our, were on our side and who were supporting what we needed and although the difficulty is that Scotland only, is only 10% of Great Britain, so even when we are really well represented, we're stu we've still only got 10% of the voice. And that became obvious when the Trident um, renewal was debated at Westminster. Scottish CND does organise events 
the events we organise are generally not don't involve direct action. The Trident Plow, the event at Coalport that, that happened recently, although Scottish CND was involved, we didn't organise it. We encouraged people to go, which is different. But it was organised by Trident Plowshares, and the advantage of that is that they can train people how to do the non-violent direct action. We don't do that. We don't provide that kind of training. Can I have everybody's attention, please? My name is Inspector Quinn of the Police Service of Scotland. Hello, Inspector Quinn. You are committing the offence of breach of the peace. Is there anything I can reasonably do or say to make you cooperate with me? I must warn you that failure to remove yourselves from the roadway will result in your arrest. Have you got your words? If you're happy, I can have a look afterwards. If you're happy to move for the bus to come through, what about this car here? Are you happy? To move the for the car. Yes. Okay. But, but we do not want rows of policemen here. They're there for your safety. They still talk about, well, don't we need to defend ourselves? And the government talks about the importance of defence. That's a blatant piece of propaganda. This is offence, not defence. This is putting a genocidal gun to the head of the rest of the world so that the rich in this country can bargain better and force other countries militarily uh, to do their will. arrested and to put myself in risk, risk like him. Uh, it sounds well, I don't know, maybe one day I will do the same as him. And also when I come to this kind of peace camps, because this is the first time I go outside of Spain to a peace camp, but I have, every summer we go to a peace camp in Spain and it's very nice to see the people, to hear the different experiences. Like also to hear experiences, not not only related to to peace action, but also like for example here, uh, a, a woman came to talk us about Afghanistan, the how women and children live in Afghanistan nowadays, um, that these kind of camps, summer camps, uh, they are very nice because you can learn a lot. And also, people are very nice. Like, <laughs> I was joking some this today with my, my friends because we we said we are the radar workers in our classes because we are like the children of the pacifists, feminists, and that kind of people. But here we are pretty normal because there's a lot of different people from all around the world, and everybody is very different. All of them, they are very nice. People.